Getting your merch maker transparencies correct. When doing your merch maker transparencies, your lines have to be solid. Basically, well, that means that if you're doing your films by hand, don't use a felt tip marker or anything that leaves a jagged edge. You're looking for a nice, sharp line quality. Uh, if you're working on the computer, don't work in RGB mode, but instead, if you can, work in bitmap. And if you can't do that, at least do grayscale and turn your anti-aliasing off. All of your ink is going to have to be super dark on your transparency or as dark as you can get it. Um, you'll have to experiment with your, uh, ink, with your inkjet printer's settings in order to get the darkest image that you can on your transparency. Also, when you're making your transparency, the ink has to be black. Uh, it, it, essentially what it needs to do it is, is, is it needs to be able to block the light and black is used no matter what color ink you're putting in the screen to create your final print. And finally, clear areas of the film have to be empty. The best easiest way to get usable transparencies is to design your art on the computer. Some of the benefits of using a computer are Making changes are, is very easy. You just adjust the image on the computer and then print a new transparency when you, when you want to make changes. Uh, it's also easier to keep backups and you can store your art on a variety of storage websites like Google Drive or Dropbox and access it anywhere wherever you need it. Once you have the art file, you just need to print your film using an inkjet printer. You burn that to a screen using MerchMaker Exposure Unit. Now there are a few considerations when you're designing your graphics. You have size, level of detail, type of ink being used in your screen, ink color being printed, type of fabric being printed, variation of detail level in the design, and some troublemaker graphics and advanced stuff that you should probably know about. Now when talking about size, although MerchMaker Kit comes with 8.5 by 11 transparency films, the MerchMaker system can handle larger images. A comfortable maximum image area is actually about 11 inches by 11 inches, and with a little skill you can push that out to about 12 inches by 12 inches. One problem with going that large is that it doesn't leave much room to operate your squeegee. If you want to use MerchMaker to print larger images, there are a few ways that you can accomplish that. Uh, one is you can use larger transparency films and consequently you'll need a larger inkjet printer to print them. You can also paste up several transparency films together and be careful how you overlap them when you do that. And one, finally, you can also tile your design as you print. You can print a bunch of little images side by side on your fabric. The level of detail um, that you're doing is a consideration. Uh, higher detail images are harder to accomplish than those with bolder type, thicker lines, and larger dots. If you want to make things easier on yourself, create designs with, thi with lines thicker than a pencil lead and fonts larger than about 12 points. MerchMaker 160 mesh screen can handle finer details than, that, than those specifications, but the further you stray from that easy mark, the more skill you'll need to pull it off. And MerchMaker does actually ship with a 160 mesh screen. To get higher detail than the 160 mesh screen can handle, you can use oftentimes a higher mesh screen available on MerchMaker.com, or you may have to make other considerations. Alright, so when considering ink color being printed, different inks have different properties. Lighter color inks tend to be higher viscosity than others, making them harder to print. In some cases, moving to a lower mesh screen like MerchMaker's 110 mesh screen, or even an 80 mesh, if the level of detail in your graphic is low enough, can make your printing go much easier. In addition, inks can be more or less opaque, making them require a double print or an underbase to help them show up on darker garments. They can also have a varying degree of bleed resistance, which can affect the suitability of you for use of certain inks, 
on certain garments. And we'll cover what dye migration, which is essentially uh, requires bleed resistance in inks, in, in another tutorial. But for now, if you print on 100% cotton, that's going to be your safest bet. You can print on 50-50s and stuff like that, but you're taking more of a risk. And regardless, get in the habit of running tests when the final product is critical. Uh, with respect to art design considerations, light colored inks being printed on dark garments may need to be designed as a multicolor imprint where an underbase or a layer that's printed underneath the, uh, the intended color is actually white. So you'll use two screens, a white screen and then a second screen for whatever color you actually want the, the imprint to be. Um, essentially, the use of the white is to mask the, the color of the garment and then with the white, and then you lay the other color on top of the white to get a brighter print. That's a little bit more advanced. The type of ink that you're using uh, can also affect how you might want to make your film uh, or your transparency film. Merchmaker comes with water-based inks unless you uh, switched them out for Plastisol uh, when you bought it. But it can be used with any kind of ink that's suitable for screen printing. And that being said, please only use screen printing inks with Merchmaker or there's a real possibility you'll ruin your screens or find some other disappointment. One common alternative ink for Merchmaker is called Plastisol, as I just mentioned. Uh, we offer Plastisol inks on Merchmaker.com for those wishing to experiment with them. Uh, they tend to be what most of your professional screen printers use, except for perhaps the boutique ones that do use water base. Uh, we also have a Plastisol versus water base ink page uh, that you can reference that tells you a little bit more about the differences between the inks and you're welcome to visit it and check it out. Um, we also carry ink additives for Plastisol. There are more of them than there are for water-based uh, and they increase the range of fabrics you can print on. And with respect to art and de design considerations, some kinds of inks or brand of inks can dry in your screen so fast that only lower mesh screens or lower detailed graphics can be easily accomplished. Um, all of the inks available on MerchMaker.com are professional grade and designed to try to avoid those problems. But you should know what kind of ink or be familiar with your ink um, before you're designing your graphics and designing how you're going to uh, make your transparency films. The type of fabric that you're printing on also is a consideration. Uh, while 100% cotton is your safest bet, some fabrics such as 50-50 cotton, 100% polyester, and lycra, and spandex, uh, sometimes you'll want to do those. And you should always test them with your inks for suitability um, before printing the critical ones. So run a few tests first. For 100% polyester, nylon, and fabrics containing lycra, rayon, and spandex, stretch additives, catalysts, and other special inks uh, might be required. Most of the time they are. Additives can change the properties of your inks, making them more or less opaque, which by the way, opacity basically means how well it masks the garment that you're printing on top of, uh, which is a problem on top of, uh, can be a problem on top when you're printing on dark garments. And they can even affect the level of detail that you can accomplish in your design. Uh, the additives can affect the level of detail. Variation of detail level in the design considerations. If a design has too much variation in detail level throughout the design, it can cause trouble. As an example, if some areas look best with only a light ink deposit while others are better off with heavy deposits, you may want to alter your design or consider using two different screens even though one color is visible. And what I mean by that is even if your entire design is black or purple, you may have two purple screens or two black screens, one for the heavy detail and one for the uh, heavy coverage. Generally, large fields of color can look spotty with a thin deposit of ink. Conversely, 
small type and thin lines close together can smudge, blur, or become unreadable if a heavy deposit of ink is used, and having both in the same screen can make for a very difficult print. That said, let's talk about troublemaker graphics and advanced stuff. As mentioned before, variations in detail level within a design can make getting a good print difficult. One common variation is called knockout text. Now, knockout text is when a field of ink has text in it. If that text contains thin lines, it can spell trouble. It can be difficult to maintain both readable text and a consistently solid print. While we presented one solution in the last section, another is to create a second screen and fill the text with a different ink color, uh, even if that ink color is the same color of the garment so that uh, basically it looks like uh, the knockout text worked. Another type of trouble graphic is one containing gradations or what's known as half tones. Essentially a gradation is, use, is the use of small dots in a pattern in order to make an ink color appear lighter. Like let's say if you wanted a, a black image and you wanted gray so you made a bunch of dots to make the gray out of the black so you could do it with just one screen. Um, this kind of stuff is common in, 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 the, in use when you're doing comic books uh, it's, or if you're trying to pull off photographs or uh, what they call grayscale images. Um, and we're going to probably cover uh, gradations in a later tutorial. In fact, I'm pretty sure we will. But it's an advanced topic and it requires a lot of attention. Initially, it's best to use solid ink colors in your graphics as you're learning and stick to line art, which will save you a bunch of headaches. Once you get your design completed on the computer, get in the habit of adding registration marks in the center top and center bottom of the graphic so that you can make proper placement of the transparency films easier. It'll also help you later when you start experimenting with multicolor imprints because you basically use those registration marks to line your screens up. With MerchMaker, you burn your screens on the press in register, which essentially means that your screens will, you burn them so they all line up. And we'll cover multicolor in a later tutorial. Okay, so with that, it's time to print the transparency. For MerchMaker, transparency should be printed using mirror image setting. Essentially, it's going to look like the image is printed backward. Um, you want to get the image as dark as you can, as, as I said before, and you'll need to experiment with your printer settings in order to get the darkest transparency you can. And Once it's printed, hold it up to the light and check it for faintness or trouble spots. And If you're planning on going professional, an inkjet printer with all black ink in all the cartridge slots does the very best job, but you can work on that later or work your way up to that. Uh, let's just get a few successes under your belt first before you start getting into that. Alright, you're good to go. Let's make a transparency.